math 31 let's take a look at one more example where we're going to determine domain and range of functions and and let's just dive into it on the upside with example three i gave you the graphs all right um, and just looking at a and b these are both functions they would pass the vertical line test uh, this one would actually pass the horizontal line test. This would be a one-to-one -one function. This would fail the horizontal line test, so it would not be a one-to-one -one function. But let's, let's do our domains and ranges. So it's always left to right and then down to up. All right, so let's, let's take a look at what we have. I have no arrows here. So if I look at the leftmost point, it looks like it's the ordered pair four and then eight. And then the rightmost point is almost eight two. I say almost because I, I really wanna make the distinction between this closed dot and this open dot. So if I go left to right and I look at these X coordinates, I'm going from four to eight. So let me go ahead and write that in. But I want to include four, so I'll put the bracket and Conversely, I do not want to include eight because of the open dot, so I'll put the parentheses, okay? All right, so now for range, we need to go down to up. It looks like my high and low are in the same position, so I wanna look at the Y coordinates. I'm gonna go a low of two to a high of eight, so let me erase this. All right, so my low of two, I do not want to include because of the open dot, and my high of eight, I do want to include because of the closed dot. Okay, great. I'm gonna scooch this up just so I make sure everything's in view now that we're, we're on past the directions. Okay, so let's take a look here again for domain. I'm gonna go left to right. For range, I'm gonna go down to up. I don't see any arrows, so there's not gonna be any infinities moving around this or in my solutions, but let's see. If I go left to right, that is the leftmost point, that is the rightmost point. So this looks like it's at about two, negative two, and this one looks to be at about six, negative two. So for the domain, I wanna take a look at my x values. It looks like I'm gonna go from two to six, all right? And if I'm looking at how those are drawn, they both have closed dots, so I'm going to write this up as the interval from two to six. Uh, if I wanna go down to up, this is the lowest point, and these are tied for the highest point. I don't have to worry about the fact that they're tied. I can take either Y value, but let's see what this was. This is the order pair four. It looks like it's four, negative six. So my low is negative six. and my high was a y value of negative two. I want to include all of that because these are all ordered pairs with closed dots. Okay, so we're gonna keep on moving on. I'm gonna scooch this up. We're gonna get to C and D. So let me get those in view. All right, that looks pretty good. So as we're moving through this, Okay, so domain, I'm just gonna write left to right on both of these. And now we're gonna go down to up. All right, I do notice an arrow here, so I wanna be attentive to that. This is going right forever and up forever. Okay. So with that, these are both functions. They would both pass the vertical line test. Um, this one would pass the horizontal line test, so it would be one-to-one. -one. This would fail the horizontal line test. You can see if I put a horizontal line right through there, it would touch at two places. So this is a one-to-one -one function, this is not. And again, at a later section, we'll talk about how this function has an inverse and this one does not. All right, so I see over here my arrows. I've got right forever and up forever, so I'm gonna swap these out with some infinities. All right, I'm gonna put parentheses because we never 
can include infinities. Um, and here is my leftmost point, and the coordinates are 1, 2, 3, 4. This is negative 4, negative 2. So for the domain, I only want the x-coordinate. So my domain here would start at negative 4, which I want to include. Now, this point also happens to be my lowest point. Uh, and the y value there was negative 2. So that means my range will start at negative 2. Okay, great. Now here, if I look left to right, it looks like, and I'm just going to have to estimate this, this looks to be about, what, 1950 and maybe 47? Again, I'm just estimating. I don't really know. Um, over here, for my rightmost point, this, this looks like about the year 2000. And if I had to guess, the population looks to be, what are we looking at here? Hold on, let me circle back. Maybe 70, I guess I wanna say 77? Maybe I'm stuck on sevens. Okay. Now, in terms of low to high or down to up, this is my lowest point. So this will double up, but this is not my highest point. This is my highest point. So I want to pay attention to that highest point. That looks like it happened somewhere around the year, like maybe 1985, if I'm guessing. So this looks to be around 1985, comma, that would be, what are we at, 90. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. For left to right, it looks like I want my leftmost point to my rightmost point, so 1950 to 2000. I'm going to include both of those. All right, and then my lowest point was 47, or approximately 47. It's, again, it's my best guess. So I'm going from 47 to my highest point of about 90. All right, and again, with this, I'm, I'm saying these are approximate numbers, approximate population. I don't know for sure. I wasn't given the raw data, but that's gonna be my best guess. All right, so we had left to right and then low to high. Okay, so I'm gonna flip over to my computer and I just want us to take a look at domains and ranges for those toolkit functions. And those are gonna show up on page 187 of your text. All right, so I'll flip to my computer and I'll see you in a bit, bye. In round 31, I just wanna take a moment and look at the domains and ranges for the toolkit functions that are on page 187 of your text. So if we head over here, taking a look at your toolkit functions, um, I had mentioned when we were doing a previous example that most lines have domains and ranges of negative infinity to positive infinity, and the exceptions to that are the horizontal and vertical lines, and, and you see a, an exception right here with your constant function. So my arrows go left to right forever, but you can see that there's no down to up. They're just the y values are stuck on that constant of c, so that's why my range is just really one number, c. Um, here's your basic line, right, domain and range, all real numbers. Here's our domain and range for the absolute value function. So I go left forever to right forever, so my domain's all real numbers. But my range starts here at the vertex, which for your basic absolute value function is zero, and it's going to go zero to infinity. Right? We saw an example of a parabola, not your basic x squared function, but we had done x squared plus 3, it's still domain negative infinity to infinity, range in this case zero to infinity. And again, you won't hit a domain issue unless you have a fraction, a radical, or a logarithm. And if you look at x squared, this is not a fraction, it is not a radical, it is not a logarithm. Same thing with x cubed, not a fraction, not a radical, not a logarithm, so the domain is all real numbers. Now for the cubic, it goes down forever to up forever, so the range is also real numbers. Now here, for the reciprocal function, we finally run into a fraction, right? And you'll take note that zero is not in my domain because zero would literally zero out the denominator. And we did a version of the reciprocal function uh, in 
in example three, or I can't remember, is it example three or example two? I'm going to cheat myself. Oh, it's example two. We did a version of the reciprocal function. We did three over x plus two, and we had a vertical asymptote at x equaling negative two. Here the vertical asymptote is x equals zero or the y-axis. But you see zero is out of my domain and zero is also out of my range. And for x squared, or I should say the reciprocal squared function, excuse me, I also can't plug zero in. And you see zero is given the boot from my domain and it's the lower bound of my range. For the square root function, we did a version of this as well, where if you have an even index, your radicand has to be positive. So for your basic square root function, it starts at the origin and then heads up and right. Whereas for a cube root function, we can cube root or take the odd index of anything. We don't care if the radicand is positive or negative, and you get domains and ranges for all real numbers there. Okay, so with that, we're going to start to look at piecewise functions, which again, for some of you, you may have seen before, or this could be totally new for you, but, but we'll, we'll tackle it. It'll be great. All right, so with that, I'll see you in a few. Bye.